Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rendezvous. Uh, it's a program designed by Rhonda Shervin to help us grow in, in love and in holiness. And on our panel today are Maria Smith and Dave Basconi. We're all friends of Dr. Rhonda, and we're trying to grow in love and holiness. We explore this topic each week by discussing one chapter of a book written or edited by Dr. Rhonda. So as you know, we're currently discussing Dr. Rhonda's little book called Give Me Your Heart, Preparing for Eternal Life. This book contains excerpts from the spiritual writings of Charles Rich, and you can obtain this booklet free at Rhonda's website, www.rondachervin.com. Just click on Books, and a listing of her many outstanding free ebooks will appear as you scroll down the page. And the book we're discussing today, that's kind of like the background of our discussion, is a compilation of marvelous quotations on spirituality by Charles Rich. It's organized alphabetically in chapters by topic such as lonely, rebellious, worried, the human heart, etc. Today we're on the chapter titled Doubtful. So uh, let us now begin with prayer. Holy Spirit and dear Lord, we ask you to pour your blessings out on Dr. Rhonda and her family and all, on all our wonderful listeners and her panel. Holy Spirit, Please inspire us with thoughts that will help all of us grow in love and holiness. And we ask Charles Rich, who's smiling at us from heaven, to always pray for us, but especially now, to help us grow in love and holiness as we meditate upon and discuss his writings. So in um, Dr. Rhonda's tradition, we always open by saying a little something about the background of the person or book we're discussing. So this morning, after reading the Gospels of the day describing the healing of a woman in a synagogue, and she had been crippled for 18 years, and after Jesus healed her, there were two reactions. The leader of the temple was really outraged that this healing took place on Sunday, and then the people seemed to be secretly very, very happy. So there's a combination of pride and joy in there. So I was thinking, gee, I would like to open with a quote on pride. So in Rhonda's biography of Charlie, she describes him as, um, um, quote, a model of joy in Christ. And um, uh, this is important to know because it ties in with pride. I'll be connecting pride and joy together. Uh, People who possess God's joy uh, are close to Jesus. And then um, Rhonda describes him in one more sentence. Charles' most lavish display of his love of neighbor is seen in his complete self-giving to his spiritual friends. So let me tie today's gospel about pride and joy. And the description of Charlie as always being joyful and always self-giving, emptying of himself. So I'll tie all these thoughts together in a beautiful bow. And this bow is a four-sentence paragraph written by Constance Hull. She goes, Pride is the original sin through which we desire to be God, to always be right, and to have power. No joy can come from pride, but we continue on this path in vain. It is only through an emptying out of ourselves, like Charlie does, that we are able to grow in humility and abandon pride through the grace God gives us. It is when we forget ourselves that we are filled up and our relationships become what God means for them to be, and we are infused with joy. So this concludes uh, pretty much my opening uh, comments about Charles Rich and the direction of our conversation, the, the uh, chapter title is Doubtful. And before the program, we always talk on, on the phone together for a few minutes. 
and we would talk, and of course, there's Maria and and Charles and um, <coughs> excuse me. So we were talking about um, uh, the new book. Uh, that Dave um, Basconi just put together, and Maria said she had just downloaded it from um, from Kindle. So we were talking about that, and uh, we had all met Dr. Rhonda this week at breakfast. So it was a good week for us. So we had a so we do have a lot to talk about before the program too. But um, I, uh, so we'll start with Maria as we traditionally do for for her comments, and then we'll go to Dave, and maybe he can say a few words about um, the book that. Dr. Rhonda helped him to, um, she inspired him and gave him suggestions as, as to how to put his book together. So we have a lot to say today. So, so Maria, do you want to take the ball as we traditionally do? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so you were discussing pride and all, everything that you said was wonderful. I have a few thoughts of my own to add to that. Pride is wanting to be God. But our hearts and souls have a desire to be like God, to be united with God. And I think this is where a lot of people fall into error, into confusion. We are created to share in God's divinity. We are created to become like God because we are created, first of all, in the image and likeness of God. But wanting to be God is very different from wanting to be united to him and like him. And pride, the evil pride, because there's a a good sense of pride too where you take pride in the work that you do because you do a good job because you want to, not necessarily because of how much money or how little money you're going to get. But anyway, the evil pride is, is wanting to be in control, wanting to be God, wanting to do with your life whatever you want because you are right and you know best. Whereas wanting to be like God is allowing yourself to be formed, to be molded by God, that you will become like him. So the, actually the desire to be God is a good desire as long as it is to be like God and docile to his will but it becomes evil when people separate themselves from God I mean they might even say they're doing it for God but if they're doing it for themselves and they know deep down who they're really doing it for um, so yes yeah, so that was about pride and I don't know exactly where I heard this I heard this more than one place about what is the major difference between you and God uh, or between uh, yeah Good. Let's put it this way. Between a doctor and God. Well, God knows that he is not that doctor, but the doctor might think he is God, or a baseball player, or any one of us. The major difference is God knows he is not us, but we think we are God. So that's the huge fallacy. Yeah, a good description of pride, and it goes back to uh, Adam and Eve. He wanted to... Um, uh, Eve wanted to take the moral law upon herself and and be God. Um, she uh, she looked at the fruit she shouldn't have. She engaged in a conversation with the serpent. She should have run away on, on the other side. And she started. Uh, she just wanted not only to be like God, but to be God and set her own rules. So I, I guess that goes all the way back. Uh, but but well said. A big difference between be God and wanting to be like God and um, and we were created in, in God's image which is our it's our duty to develop yeah good point Maria excellent thank you uh, I'm done for now I mean if Dave would like to speak Dave do you want to comment on that and, and then maybe say a few words about uh, your book as we were talking uh, before the start of the show I can continue, Louise, if you'd like me to. Okay, I think we lost Dave. Okay. No, no, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Okay. I'm just, uh, You're thinking uh, hard, huh? And I know you had something else prepared that you wanted to, 
to say. We just happened to put you on the spot. We're, we're pretty good at that. Uh, do you want to start with what you had planned to say this morning, Dave? Sure. Uh, we can do that. Um, I actually uh, got something in the mail from uh, EWTN, and I thought it was interesting. Um, it has to do with Mother Angelica. I'll just read a couple of things. Uh, it says, Mother Angelica was a visionary who could speak with depth, knowledge, and understanding on many subjects. But she could also speak bluntly in plain language in challenging others to heed God's word. And here's her quote. Holiness is not for wimps, and the cross is not negotiable, sweetheart. It's a requirement. Um, now, we all know her as a feisty nun, and I was thinking about that, and, and perhaps an easier way to understand what she was saying or trying to tell us, I think, um, is to substitute a couple of words, uh, maybe some concepts that might be familiar or more familiar with us. Uh, and the revised uh, quote would go something like this, success is not for wimps, and the hard work is not negotiable, sweetheart. It's a requirement. And uh, by success, I'm really referring to it means any, any achievement uh, in anything that's worthwhile, whether it's work or sports or education, marriage, family life, um, you know, um, success uh, being an, uh, any kind of an achievement. And, and I think most people would agree that the cross was hard work. So I think Mother is saying if you want success in your faith, then uh, hard work, which is your cross, is absolutely essential. And uh, I'll read it again real quick. It says, holiness is not for wimps, and the cross is not negotiable, sweetheart. It's a requirement. So I think we should approach our faith like anything else that we want to achieve uh, and understand uh, there's a certain process involved, and uh, I just thought her words really brought that to the forefront. As you say that, I'm chuckling. It reminds me of our conversation uh, when we saw Rhonda. I had mentioned that you often bring things out in a business perspective because you, you live in the business world and you think business. And um, uh, success and hard work go hand in hand in, in business, like bread and butter. And uh, as you say, your your revision or your improv of Mother Angelica, I see you with your your business sense, Dave, and and I love it because that that certainly w- would not have come from me. It's it's obvious it came from you. And well, I think yeah. yeah. And the reason I, I got thinking in those terms is not everybody can relate to holiness and or the cross and um so to get that person that might be having a little hard time understanding what she's driving at i just did the substitute and to put it more in secular terms yeah yeah in secular terms but uh, again it all flows in the same direction you know uh, the the truth i've always yeah, the truth always converges, and it has to. And, um, Dave, so I'd now, like to ask you, did you have any reader in particular or anybody in mind when you were writing your book? Oh, the, uh, the book? Uh, did I have anyone? Well, I had, uh, yeah, I, I had the, uh, the human race in mind when, when I was writing the book, to be honest okay. with you. But nobody um, in particular? No one person. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, uh, if we can talk about it now. It might be a good uh, way to start talking about it. The, the title of the book is Nonsense to Horse Sense. And then the subtitle is How Horses Tell Us the Truth About Ourselves and How to Live. So, again, no one person in mind, but just everybody uh, in general and it was just my observations about horse, how horses live and how we can learn from how um, they, they've been around for millions of years, they live in the wild, uh, and they have to live a certain way to survive. And uh, I think our world is full of nonsense because we have uh, somehow gotten off the track. Horses, as prey animals, can't get off the track or they die. Um, we, with free will, can make lots of choices, 
and those choices, I think, cause the nonsense to start uh, to evolve uh, in our lives and, in, you know, into the world. So yes. th- that's kind of the, the gist of, the, of where I was going with it. Yes, yes. That's very good. Yeah, I, I like that. And, and when, you, um, when you say they, if they get off the track, uh, they die, um, it, it reminds me of uh, an Ignatian contemplation where he tells us to think of the many times we've gotten off track and also think of God's mercy to us when he did not take us when we were um, off track. He, he did not take us to hell at that particular moment in time. Um, and um, and how many people are in hell right now who, who, have, who have led, in a sense, well, who haven't done this uh, uh, for, for one mortal sin. So, um, you know, so we may have gotten off track and God pulled us out and allowed us to carry on through his mercy, and, and as we reflect on how fortunate and blessed we are compared to people who may be in hell right now or who are in hell for, for one mortal sin, it's, it's like unfathomable. Yeah. Well, yeah, congratulations on your book, Dave. That's yes, a, congratulations. Yeah, we're, well, we're thank all you. happy for you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I do agree that if, you know, human beings get off track, too, spiritually, we do die. Like Louise was saying, you know, God can pull us back, but only if we allow him to. But if we eventually stay uh, on the off track, we will die in our sin and have eternal death instead of eternal life for all eternity. Yeah, and the first step is recognizing it. We, we have to, uh, you know, come to grips with the fact that we're living in a, uh, in a way that's not best for us right. as a human race. Right. And, and unfortunately, all the noise in the world tells us that um, not only does it pull us off track, but it keeps us there uh, for some oh, yeah. reason. And yeah. uh, so the kind of, again, the whole point of the book was to get people to slow down. I mean, I make a reference in the book about finding the barn is a quiet place for reflection and that if people could find their quiet uh, place, uh, their barn, if you will, uh, for a reflection, that's the first step. You have to, you know, um, uh, slow down and uh, think through things and what makes sense and what doesn't, and hopefully the book will cause people to make that, uh, you know, take that first step and then start to think through things. And then how horses live um, is, is – is, not one for one, but it's they're like a, a a role model in some ways. That if we they've been around for millions of years, and if we want to be around, uh, then we have to do things in a certain way. And um, again, everybody starting to come to grips with this is important because just one person doing it is not enough. We all have to agree on the right approach. Yes, or at least the majority has to, yes. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Actually, if you have a strong minority, that could also work because God's grace can work even through very few people, as is evidenced with so many battles and so many things where the Christians or the ones who, um, whatever, were on, like even the Jewish, the Israelites with Joshua, really God can work through anything. Um, I, there was something else I wanted to comment on that she was saying um what was that mm. oh yes finding the quiet time oh my goodness that is so 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 essential slowing down and finding the quiet time and i had a thought because i've seen i've just heard more stories and i've seen more articles about how much depression is really afflicting more and more people all over the world and the thought came to me you know, depression, I mean, God can make, take, make good out of anything, can bring good out of anything. Depression is God's way of saying to people, slow down. I mean, it's not the best way at all, but it's a, it's a way, if a person won't slow down of their own accord, God says, slow down. Yes, 
Yeah, that's yes. true. And and then uh, there's so much suffering that's wasted. It must be united to the cross of Christ. I'd like to just read one line from Charlie Rich from this chapter discussed it that ties into our to our discussion. Um, uh, on page 29, it goes, It is due to God's mercy and love that they, they meaning saints, that they do not fall into the abyss of evil and remain in it forever after they die. So so we were talking about like God's grace, uh, God's grace saving us, God's grace getting us out of depression, God's grace keeping us out of hell, God's grace not putting us is not subjecting us to hell when when we had one mortal sin on our soul, and how how awesome it is, um, how awesome God's mercy and love is. It's it's beyond our comprehension. It's it's unfathomable. And uh, but we but we have to do the work. God's grace is immense. It's unlimited. But we have to put in all the work. And I think it was Saint Ignatius who said. Work as if it all depended on you. Pray as if it all depended on God. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That one's been quoted by by many saints, and it's it's true. I, I've told that one to my kids a, a few times, and um, and that's you know similar to uh, today's opening quote about success. Um, success and hard work go together. Um, uh, for as we get older, we realize that's really true. Uh, however, if we could get that concept across to our youth when they're very young, so they could get on the right track with superb momentum, how they could excel in their spiritual life and um, and their social life too. Hard uh, hard work. We need to do hard work. We need to cooperate with God's grace. We need to make of ourselves what God intended for us to be, and. Um, probably beyond our imagination, the, the wonderful, wonderful creatures he wanted us to be because Mary's the only one that cooperated 100% of the time and uh, and she's so full of love, so full of beauty. Um, and and if we're ever feeling down or, or depressed a little, we, we only need to think of Mary's love for us. She supposedly loves each and every one of us more than our mother and more than all the mothers combined in this world, we're, we're like so dearly loved, and God has been so merciful to us. We need to uh, uh, to be grateful every day, to stop and think what we should be thankful for, uh, particularly at the end of the day. And I'm sure uh, as, as we all take time, quiet time, as, as Dave said, as we take quiet time in our lives to, to reflect on spiritual matters, and and we reflect on what we're thankful for. We probably miss more than half the boat. We just see the tip of the iceberg, and and it will all reveal itself to us in our later years, and and certainly in heaven. Don't you think? Yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, Maria, there's another version of what you said, uh, and it goes like it's a little shorter. It goes, uh, "Do your best and pray the rest." Uh, I've yeah. always thought that. I remember yeah. in grade school, we had to memorize all these maxims, and one was, do your best and God will do the rest. Every day, um, I was in, in grade school in the 50s, we had to memorize everything. We, we memorized poems and maxims, and I went to a, a French grade school. We had to memorize all the prepositions. There was nothing those nuns didn't have us memorize. It was incredible, and, and that's not done anymore today. As an aside, we have uh, only like six and a half uh, minutes left. Um, is there anything in particular you wanted to focus on and get through before uh, before the show is over? Uh, a particular quote or a particular thought that you really wanted to get through before the clock cuts us off? I think, uh, you know, the theme that we're on is good. Uh, yes. You know, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure you you were able to say what was on your mind, and and I did like your your quote on on Mother Angelica, and yeah, yeah what that one. Mother Angelica did for the world is um, is her often repeated statements: "You are all called to be great saints, 
um, until her time and until until St. Teresa, but I think Mother Angelica revived it a lot. People thought saints were or, or somebody from the olden days, oftentimes not married. And um, people used to see saints as out there and not related to us, but Mother Angelica had a way of bringing everything down to earth, re- reminding us with all her programs, you are all called to be great saints. Don't lose the opportunity. And, and we must pray for this. And as Maria said, we, we have the grace, but it's not enough to have the grace. We must cooperate with it. We must desire it. And just desiring to be a saint is, is the first step. And that's a grace from God, too. So it's all propelling us in the right direction. And, and God said... In these days, he would raise great saints, so, so we need to pray for that. And, and it's so important, because if, if we're not holy, we lose many opportunities to to offer good deeds to God to save souls, because Mary and Fatima said people go to hell forever for one mortal sin, because there was nobody there to pray for them. So so we need to develop a sensitivity for for each soul, we need to develop Mary's love so we don't want to lose anybody at all and, and realize how important everybody is, everybody's soul and how loved. And and just do our best to not, not waste a minute to uh, to love, to pray, to bri- try to bring people closer to God and, and to try to work on our own holiness. It's mm-hmm. said that all our sacrifices are like almost nothing, uh, well, uh, um, Sister Faustina had said we, we make sacrifices and mortifications, uh, yet we, God, God wants these and loves these, uh, but compared to obedience to God, uh, um, they're not worth that much on the scale. Although they're priceless compared to obedience, their weight is, is little. So, so we all have to work on growing in obedience. And St. Teresa of the Child Jesus said the way to grow in, in that is and, and in sanctity is to just ask God to make us fall madly in love with him, to grow in love. And when we love someone, it really hurts us. When we hurt them, we don't want to hurt them. Is that how you see it, too? Yes. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, yes. We only have like two and a half minutes. Should we end with a, like a longer prayer, uh, as, you, as you say, a, a final closing sentence? I'd also um, like to pray for... All Jewish people, especially in light of what happened over the weekend, that we may that everyone may turn to God, and that we may all love one another in the way that God commands us to. Yeah, yeah and also it would be good if people could find that quiet time to ask why does things why do things like that happen? How does someone get to that point? Uh, to commit such a horrible uh, atrocity, um, I, I think sometimes we, we we catch the headlines and the news and everything, but maybe we don't stop long enough to ask how does this happen in our society, and and that's that, that's the reason for that quiet moment. Um, we we go from headline to headline or uh, you know news flash to news flash, but until we stop as individuals and think about the why of why we're getting these headlines, I, I, I don't really see much progress. Uh, you know, the politicians all jump up and talk about it for a couple of days until something else comes in and replaces it. And then life goes on pretty much the same as before. And unless we find that quiet place to uh, make some real changes in our in our minds and in our hearts, it's not going to really change much at all on the surface. Yeah, that's true. And then in our church bulletin, the St. Patrick Cathedral in Norwich, um, about, well, three weeks ago, there was a blurb that I, I didn't realize that if we if we go to the Blessed Sacrament for only a half hour, the church will now give us a plenary indulgence for that. It doesn't have to be the exposition of the Eucharist, which is the, the Blessed Sacrament, so that would be an ideal place to, to reflect on that. Or if you have your horse's barn, that's a good place to go to. So, yeah. So we have less than a minute to go. So, Jesus, we, we bring all of our intentions, the intentions of our, our panelists to, to thee. 
uh, we bring them all to you. We ask you to have mercy on us, mercy on our families, mercy on the world. We ask you to wash away our, our sins and the evil of the world with the water that gushed forth from your side on the cross. And we ask you to cover us with blood and to your blood and to protect us so that we can grow in holiness and help us to practice what we talk about. Help us to carve out time in our schedule to reflect on you. Amen. Goodbye, everybody, and, and thank you for, for listening and being on the panel. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Louise. Bye-bye. God Bye. bless everybody. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.